On behalf of GE and Genovasi, I would like to welcome all of you to this afternoon's special talk on Cultivating an Innovation Ecosystem by Beth Comstock. To start the afternoon session, we would like to invite Carol Wong from Genovasi to give her opening remarks. Carol. A very good afternoon um, and a warm welcome to Genovasi Centre and to our special guest, Beth Comstock, steward, uh, steward of uh, CEO of uh, uh, GE ASEAN. Um, and of course, the distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and the members of the media. First of all, I would like to thank um, GE for giving us the opportunity to co-organize this event. Uh, this event, like what Nadia shared, right, is essentially our uh, part of our guest speaker series, where we organize this for our students for each intake. Without further ado, I would like. Together with me, please welcome Beth to share her talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. So what an honor it is to be here. And uh, already I've been here for 30 minutes and I'm inspired. And I uh, am inspired by Carolyn being a chief inspiration officer. What a great calling. So thanks for the opportunity um, for us to be here. I thought I would take a few minutes and just talk about how we um, think about innovation and design thinking at GE, and then would love to open it up for questions or comments or uh, examples of things you're working on that uh, I can take back and move. So I work for GE, uh, a, a small company of about $150 billion in revenue, 300,000 people in 150 countries. And forget that, what's perhaps most amazing about our, country, our company is we've been around for 130 years. And I think you don't get to be a 130-year-old company uh, without learning a thing or two about being nimble, knowing when to change, uh, how, to, um, how, to, how to disrupt yourself at, at times if you have to. So I'd like to think innovation is in our DNA. That being said, we, we're constantly having to push ourselves to be more innovative, to be fresher, to move faster. Let me give you a bit of a perspective on, on that. Um, one, we're an amazing technology company. Uh, we make the kind of technology that brings many of us together, jet engines, trains, uh, healthcare equipment, think of an MRI, power turbines that power cities. So we're very much focused on technology that um, solves big world problems and helps power the world, move the world, cure the world, build the world. That, that's the kind of uh, technology that we like. So you'd imagine we, uh, we have technologists, we have about 40,000 technologists who wake up every day so passionate about pushing the limits of science. We also have about 40,000 people whose sole job it is is to get that technology into the marketplace, to understand where the world's going. And that's where I spend a lot of my time and uh, what, what, what I'm so passionate about innovation is it has to happen in two dimensions. Um, technology companies need to innovate with technology, but they also need to innovate from the market back. So that would be the first thing I, I think we strive a lot to focus on innovation is technology is amazing, but it has to be tethered to a new from Genovasi and I'm in charge of the talent uh, management over here so you correctly pointed out that one of the most important components of innovation is the ability to fail early and fail often uh, my question for GE is maybe how do you build the reward management system around such a trait it's such a good question I I wish I had a great answer for it and I don't yet I um, I'll give you give you some examples of what hasn't worked okay um, I think one, what does work is you have to recognize that your people are allowed to fail. Uh, a couple years ago with these imagination breakthroughs I mentioned, these internal startups, uh, I wanted someone to step forward and be a role model in the company for failure. So it's like, hey, I'd like, to, I'd like to highlight your failure story. Well, as you'd imagine, not many people raise their hand to do that. People are really happy to be credited with the success, but when you say, I'd like to take your story around, and share with it why you failed. No one wanted to do it. 
Um, so I, you know, I think that would have been one thing. I, I think you need to stand up and say this failed, but it actually succeeded, and let me tell you why. Um, I, 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 those are the kind of things I think I would aspire to I, in, a, in an organization. Um, I know our chairman, Jeff Emmelt, has been very good about what, what his role in a lot of cases, he's, he's been a great chairman and force for innovation in our company. I mean, I, I think he'll go down in history, in GE's history, as the innovation chairman because he's really pushed us to new places and new spaces. What he does very effectively is he helps shoulder the risk. He'll say to somebody, go ahead, I, I'm, I'm gonna t I, it's okay. I'm not gonna hold you accountable for, for the failure. Let's just give it a shot. What do we have to lose? Go do it. He'll share funding many times. That's some of what I've also seen is if you can come up with a funding model where you share the risk and reward, um, that helps sometimes help people feel uh, a little bit more passionate about taking risk. And so if a project that Jeff said go for fails, he can look at himself and go, eh, sorry, I told you to do it. What are we going to do? So th those would be a couple of things. I think um, leadership that, that says, I'm, I'm in this with you. You put the right funding mechanisms. Hopefully you can find some role models. Good luck. I haven't found anyone who's been willing to do that. Um, and maybe there are some incentives. We just haven't quite cracked the code in terms of incenting people financially um, for, for